Good morning, good morning, good morning. We have two wonderful people with us on the show today, and some of you that have watched the show before have seen them, and uh, you're going to hear some more things about their lives this morning. Uh, one of them has been an Elvis impersonator. In fact, he was the first, the original Elvis impersonator. Um, just anywhere, I guess, and uh, his name is Wade Cummins, but you know him better as Elvis Wade. He has quite a profound story and testimony as of four years ago. Some tragedies and some things that were going on uh, caused him to to find the Lord. And uh, another lady that is with us is uh, a girl named Sandy Posey. A lot of you remember her from the 60s. She had hit songs forever and uh, a big career. And through all of it, she says she was a failure, even though she had just about everything anybody could imagine. And uh, we're going to hear a little about her story. I want you to hear her sing. I want you to meet both of my guests here this morning. Gosh, you heard Sandy Posey sing, and she sings as great as ever. In fact, maybe I think better. And uh, Sandy Posey in the 1960s was one of the big stars with the big dream girl career. And uh, she says it all came crashing one day, but she met somebody that was more important, had something more important, and she's going to tell you about that today. Also, Wade Cummins, better known as Elvis Wade, and they're both with me today. They both now travel with the Elvis Wade Show all over the world. Good morning. 
Good morning. Hi. I'm so glad to see you both this morning. And I was glad to see you walk in the door the other day because <laughs> you have a lot to talk about. It's good to see you again. Gosh, you sing good. Oh, thank you. You always did, but, but I think that was wonderful this morning. I'm so glad to see that, that your life has really changed. When, when did it, let's go back and, and tell a little bit of your, your past. What, what was okay, being October's a star about? Pardon? What was being a star like? Oh, well, I don't know that I ever achieved star status, but I had some hit records in the 60s, and this was a very confusing, lonely time for me because uh, I had made music my God, and I thought if I ever get that hit record, that's going to fulfill me inside, and bring me all the love that I crave, that we all crave down deep, mm -hmm. and it didn't. And it just made me more lonely, as a matter of fact. Why did you crave so much love? What kind of family did you come from? Well, I think we all crave that love. I think there's a place within all of us that mm -hmm. only Jesus Christ and the Lord and God above can, can feel inside of us. Mm -hmm. But uh, I came from a, a family of love. I had many brothers and sisters, and mother that loved me and a, a father who had problems with alcohol but I knew down deep inside me he loved me anyway but um, nothing can take that place mm -hmm. of the Lord living in your heart and he's the one that we all need to fulfill us inside. Mm -hmm. But you didn't Things have that. take his place. Mm -hmm. You didn't have that though. No. Was no, your family not Christian? Or? Yes, my family were Christians but I I didn't know him personally myself, mm -hmm. and I didn't know how to know him personally. But um, I always said that one of these days I was, I knew that he gave me a voice and that he wanted me to use it. He used to speak to me when I was real little, but I didn't have anyone to give me the direction that I need mm -hmm. to know how to use the talent that he gave me for his glory. So I used it for my own glory. Mm -hmm. And he said he would give his glory to no man. And the more I took his glory to myself, the longer I became. Sandy and Wade, before we do anything, can we pray? Oh, Could we you. do that? Because we are having, you know what this is all about when you when you start having technical problems on a show, and Wade especially, you just was, you were telling me something about package shows. You want to tell me a little about that, and then we'll, we'll pray here in a minute. Right. Yeah, lots of times, uh, you know, when you're doing a concert and you're the, uh, you know, normally, uh, Lots of times we have a, a warm-up group that comes out and performs right before our, our show, which, you know, we come on last. And so we spend an hour and a half sometimes, you know what I'm talking about, doing a sound check. And for the people out there that don't understand this, you have monitors and, each, and you have to hear yourself on stage. And uh, everyone has to hear so much piano, so much background music, so much drums, so that you can coordinate everything and put it all together and make the song sound right. And so you spend all this time doing this an hour and a half and get it all set up, get all the little adjustments done, and then the warm-up group that only is only there for 20 minutes comes out and changes everything. And so they walk off, and the main show comes back out. Of course, you got feedback and screaming, and you don't hear this, you don't hear that, and it's just a mess. You're, you're out there for an hour and a half, and you spend an hour trying to get it straightened out while you're performing. So yes. It, uh, yes, and still trying to perform. Father, we come into your house this morning with praise, Father, lifting up the name of Jesus, praising the name of God, Father. And, Father, we come into it also with thanksgiving for all that you've done, Father. And we just ask that you anoint this show this morning. We ask that you bypass all these technical difficulties, Father, that, that we're having here this morning, Father. And, Father, we just ask that you anoint each one of us so that we may spread the good news that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and he's Lord of Lords. King of Kings, Father. And we just praise you for the work that you've done here at Channel 39, and we lift up Susan. We know where her heart is, Father, and we just ask that you anoint her this morning and each morning when she comes out here to do this show, Father. And we praise you for the work that Channel 39 is doing in getting the gospel out there, Father. And we thank you for it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Lord. Jesus. In his holy name we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you this morning, Wade, for doing that. So many people think I'm probably calling you by your last name if they know <laughs> Elvis Wade. And uh, it's I want to talk about both of your careers here. You both know what it's like to be in a star position, and you both know what it's like to hurt 
and to find the king. And uh, let me let me go over here to to Wade for a minute. And uh, you talked about your show. You just did a thing in Mexico. Yes, right. We were down there for eight days total. Mm -hmm. And uh, our second trip to Mexico City it was great. We had a great time. What what did you do? What did the Elvis thing? You're you're still doing that, and a lot of people are going to say, if you found the Lord, why are you still doing this? I had a problem with that to begin with. Uh, when I first found the Lord, you know, I thought well, I, what I need to do immediately is I need to give this show up and I need to 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 do other things. And the Lord dealt with me on that immediately and showed me how uh, Wade Cummins couldn't open very many doors, but uh, Elvis Wade was able to. Uh, and I could spend the whole hour telling you things that he's used Elvis Wade for. Uh, I went into churches and spoke, and uh, and uh, the name Wade Cummins coming in there didn't didn't uh, draw me people, but Elvis Wade did. And uh, it doesn't make any difference. I you know I, I said, Lord, it doesn't make any difference how you use or what you use, as long as these people come in to hear the name of Jesus lifted up and to hear the good news. Uh, that's all that's important. Uh, Wade Cummins doesn't mean anything. I had a problem in the past. Uh, I've always wanted to come out from behind the Elvis impersonation thing. I started this thing, as you mentioned, long before there were any Elvis impersonators around. Mm -hmm. And so many guys have come out of the woodwork since Elvis died and, and really put a bad light on it to where people uh, really take it very lightly, the word Elvis impersonator very lightly, and, re and rightfully so because... There have been so many people that have uh, really trashed it up. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't have a problem with that anymore. And uh, as I said, the Lord has dealt with me on it. He's shown me how he's using Elvis Wade and uh, how Elvis Wade can witness in front of 37,000 people. Yes, 37,000 is what you drew. We're going to show a clip here in a, in a little while of one of those concerts that you did, and that was just this last 4th of July. Yeah, right, it was on the 4th of July, right. Okay, okay. How did you meet Sandy? How did you two meet up? Because she's traveling and singing with you now. And I well, I met Sandy for the first time, really, at a recording session. Uh, she sang background uh, on on an album that I recorded called It's Been Ten Years. It was sold through national TV. And uh, didn't think anything about it, but about, uh, I guess, a little less than two years ago, right? Mm -hmm. I, was, uh, with, I was with a good friend of mine and went downtown to uh, a record store to, to pick up an old record on Elvis that I wanted to learn. I didn't have a copy of it. We were waiting for the record store to open. And I, I seen this lady walking down the street and I said to my friend I said I know her I, I never forget a face I, I forget names but I never forget a face and I said I know her and I said I think that's Sandy Posey and she said no way and I said well, I'm, I'm telling you I'm almost sure that's Sandy Posey so we went in the record store after the record store opened and I seen her over at albums and this friend of mine kept nudging me and said go over and, and ask her if, it, if it, that's who it is and I said no, and I finally got enough nerve up to go over. In fact, I went through the over and found Sandy Posey's albums in the. This was an oldies record store, and I picked up this album. I looked at it and I looked at her and I said, "I'm pretty sure that's her." <laughs> <laughs> so I went over and started talking to her, and uh, and anyway. Uh, and I said, "I think that's Elvis Wade, but I'm not sure." <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't find an album to look at to see if it was me, though. An impersonator might not be him. <laughs> Elvis was in the building, okay. Right. And and you two linked up and started working together. Well, she, she had just said to me, she said, if you uh, if you ever do another album or or you need a background singer, uh, give me a call. You know, I'd I'd love to uh, sing background again. And 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 so uh, I don't know. We did a, my the gospel thing that that I had written. Uh, I called her up on the phone. I said, I'm I'm going in the studio to to uh, record a new gospel song that I've written, and would you like to sing background on it? And she said, yeah. So she sang on the tune that I'm going to be doing. She's one of the background singers on it. Really? Really? Why background? You have such an incredible front voice and, uh, and a young, young voice. I mean, you just, you could do today what everybody else is doing. And why do you do the background thing? Well, that's how I got into the business, was singing backup mm -hmm. in Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, I enjoyed it, and it was a lot of fun. Plus, I needed to make a living, 
and it was a good living. It was really hard for me to give it up. That, Do you feel idea. better in the background sometimes? Is that more comfortable? Um, I mean, Janie Freaky told me once that she was comfortable in the background. Why should she get out there and put up with all the star stuff? And then later, of course, she became a star. But, uh, but was maybe, that something? Maybe that was part of it back then because I was comfortable in the studio. You know, I'd spent many years in muscle shows and in Memphis and then eventually in Nashville doing backup. I don't want to interrupt, but a lot of people don't know this, but Sandy sang on several of Elvis Presley's biggest hit records. Yeah. She was one of the background singers. And uh, What were some of those records? Um, in the Ghetto and Kentucky Rain and The Wonder View. Those are the three biggest ones. I did many more, but those three. Those, ones those were, of course, everything he recorded was a hit song, so I guess you, <laughs> but you, you did a lot of those. And what were the two songs that you, you had Grammy nominations and two Grammy nominations, mm -hmm. but you also had two number one songs at a time when there were mammoth records, I mean, just in the 1960s. What were they? Well, my first big hit was Born a Woman. And it was written by Martha Sharp. And uh, then she al also wrote my second hit, which was Single Girl. Mm -hmm. And Single Girl is actually the one that hit worldwide. It's taken me about, on about three or four continents. What was that about? Which I one? mean, just, just comparing that to, to the girl I know now, Sandy Posey. Uh, what, what were the words to the song, kind of? Which one? The idea, Single Girl. Uh, single Girl was about a lonely girl on a lonely town. I know your debts are many, oh, but he's paid the cost, and loved ones are waiting at the foot of the cross. And oh, can't you see, he's waiting. While he's pleading, you stay, cause angels are rejoicing at the foot of the cross, and Jesus is smiling. Save you at the foot of 